Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Hornsby and I am your online myofunctional therapist and today I am coming to you from Rome and I'm here at the AAMS Congress with Dr. Derek Mahoney who's from Sydney, Australia and I had an incredible opportunity of working with him while I was there in Sydney. He has come out with some incredible research um, and I, I can't even begin to explain it. It's so much information compiled over 15 years of time with over 4,600 patients. Correct. And I wanted to see if we could get three takeaways from him. Treat early. We looked at uh, uh, 4,600 children yeah, so uh, who were referred in to me for orthodontic treatment, but we looked at something different. We looked at their airway and their sleep. We performed sleep studies and we realized a lot of the children who had bad bites actually also had sleep sort of breathing problems. When I trained as an orthodontist, we would not start treatment until the child had all the adult teeth. By then, the jaw stopped growing, right? And that's around what age? Like 12? 12, 12, that's 13. Usually when people are starting. The standard orthodontic age? I think age. it's too late. Too Way late. too late. Way yeah. too late if you're going to fix what I'm talking about, which is the airway. Yeah. Because remember, if a child has a narrow jaw, widening it early helps. Yeah. Uh, the American Orthodontic Association is recommending the first consult should take uh, place by age 7. And that's great because that's when you have a lot of growth of the jaw. So take home message one from our research, the children who really did better, who minimized the need for orthodontic therapy, for those kids we treated early with arch development and encouraging the jaw to grow forward, which improved their airway. A good topic number two that I think is a takeaway for parents is the ADD connection to yeah, yeah. airway issues. A lot of the children who were referred to me on their medical history, they ticked their own Ritalin because they'd been diagnosed with ADHD. In our study, we showed that 60% of the children who had ADHD actually had sleep disorder breathing problems from the sleep study. Wow. And what we also have shown is that once we improve their jaw size, their nasal breathing, their sleep, yeah. they came off their medication. Now, I'm happy to send any parent that's uh, viewing this uh, the classical papers that link poor sleep or sleep disorder breathing with the misdiagnosis of ADHD. Now, and that's not to say that every child who has ADHD um, doesn't really have ADHD, yeah. right? Yeah, of but course. it's to say probably one in two have been misdiagnosed uh, with having sleep disorder breathing problems. When you're an adult and you don't have a good night's sleep, we're tired, we're lethargic. Mm -hmm. yeah. The child works the other way. If you have young children and they stay up one hour past their bedtime, they're climbing the wall. Yeah, they get right? crazy. They get crazy. They get <laughs> hyperactive. Yeah. So what happens is these children, these children are not sleeping well. They may sleep eight hours or ten hours, but they're not getting the right quality sleep because they may be having apneic events or upper airway resistance mm -hmm. problems. So, so as a result, they become hyperactive. But rather than treat the hyperactivity with medication, actually see if you can improve this. Um, let's talk about the third takeaway though. Um, point number three, he is a huge advocate for myofunctional therapy and that's why I'm talking to him today. So um, let's talk about that. You, you'd be, you, I know you'd be the most interested in that part of my research. <laughs> of course. Right? Um, we found that children who had orthodontics had better stability of the development of their jaws if they undertook um, my functional therapy. Yeah. So here's a child who comes with a narrow jaw, the tongue can't sit there. Yeah, it's in the bottom. Right? Mm -hmm. We improve the airway so they can then start using their nose. We widen the jaw, but the thing is, that doesn't automatically mean they revert from mouth breathing to nasal breathing. Exactly. They've got to yeah. learn how to do that. I always say to parents, we teach our kids how to talk, we teach our kids how to walk. We've got to teach our kids how to breathe through the nose and get their tongue in the right position. Because all these muscles that collapse when you fall asleep, if you're doing your exercises, it's really important to do those exercises, yes. it actually keeps that forward. The British Medical Journal showed one of the best ways to treat snoring is to learn to play the didgeridoo. Why? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of those muscles um, are uh, toned and exercised. And that's something I know Sarah does really well. Look at the research coming out of Stanford University. Yeah, Stanford exactly. Medical School, Christian Gumino, his legacy in sleep medicine is my functional therapy. Yeah. I've read the research, I've seen it in my patients, it does work. The only time it doesn't work is when the kids don't do their exercises. That's true. Right? Yes. <laughs>